This is going to be a video um, detailing how to install OpenStep 4.2 Intel inside uh, VMware. Now this um, is obviously going to be VMware Fusion 3 on a MacBook, um, but it should work precisely the same uh, for VMware on other platforms as well. If you are using um, any other kind of virtualization software, then uh, your mileage may vary, but the instructions should be about the same. Okay, so first off, we're going to start by creating a new virtual machine. Now, I haven't got the OS running off a DVD or a CD. Off of this one, I've got a um, ISO image, which I took from one of my disks, just to make things a bit quicker. So, we create a custom virtual machine. Now, some people recommend that you put it as uh, FreeBSD on the operating system, but I generally leave it as other. The reason being is sometimes if you set it to FreeBSD, um, the VMware network driver won't load up. So, you go to continue and customize settings. Okay, and let's name this um, OS42 for now. Okay, so several important things. First things first. Uh, hard disks. Now, OpenStep 4.2, uh, it's got a maximum partition size of 4 gig. Now, you can use a larger disk, but it has to be split into 4 gigabyte uh, partitions. If you do use a larger disk, it needs a custom disk tab so it actually knows how to format that disk. So, for the system disk, it's best to start with four and other disks can be added as needed um, or if you don't want to uh, play with disk tab if your knowledge of BSD isn't good enough um, you can add um, you know just four disks um, three disks at four gig each remember I say three disks because it's using the old PC BIOS partitioning system and EIDE system um, that basically means you are allowed a primary master, um, a primary slave, a secondary master, and a secondary slave. And usually, um, an IDE or ATAPI CD-ROM is the secondary master. So that leaves you with all of the free disks to play with. Now you can, if you've got the relevant drivers and you know um, that OpenStep supports them, if your virtualization software uses SCSI, you could add SCSI disks. But I know that um, VMware is using a bus logic um, LSI, and OpenStep does not do that particular bus logic. It will just sit there uh, trying to bring up a SCSI disk, and it won't get very far. Now I'm going to drop this to 2 gig because I've already got an OpenStep installation, and I'm just doing this as a demo. So you can. Uh, split it into two gig files if you want to. Um, in this case, since it is two gig, I feel that leaving this option um, enabled is a bit of well, it's pointless really. But the one thing you do want to do is to pre-allocate the disk space. Okay, so I'm just going to apply this now, and it will go and create the disk. Okay, so that's the disk created. Next thing is the memory. Given the fact that NextStep and OpenStep were designed for machines from literally 20 years ago, where the minimum machine had 16 meg and the newer machines had 32 meg, um, you generally don't need gobs and gobs of memory. It will be wasted. So for virtual machines, it's generally the best to set it to 128. You can set it to 256 if you so desire, but 128 is normally the recommended value. Okay, networking, normally best to set it to bridged. Other devices you'll need are a floppy. You'll want a floppy to be able to uh, boot from the boot disk as it is not a bootable CD-ROM. 
Now it just so happens that I've already got um, some boot drivers. Um, I will try and arrange for, for the custom drivers disk, which I downloaded from some site somewhere, to be uploaded to nextcomputers.org as this is a modification of the default um, I say default, the, the, the driver disks given out by Apple but it contains relevant drivers uh, for virtual machines such as the dual ATAPI EIDE drivers as you'll see later on. So first of all we select our boot disk and connect it. Okay, USB there are no USB drivers for next step or open step so leave that disabled. Sound you can leave enabled. Sharing and applications if you have those options and auto protect um, just leave those alone there's no need to have those enabled because there's no VMware tools for open step or next step and there's probably not going to be any uh, tools for any other virtual machines like parallels or virtual PC or what have you. Okay so now that you set this up, what we do is we launch it. So just start it up. Okay, while that is booting, I'm just going to choose my open step. Um, disk image okay so it's now at the bootloader so obviously at this stage you will use the option that's relevant for the language that you're installing it for and again you'll want to prepare the disk okay so now what we do is we choose the custom drivers disk. So I'm just going to go right down here into virtual machines where I've got my disk images. Then I'm going to press enter. Okay, so the way this works is because um, Next envisaged that um, CD-ROMs and disks might be of different types for Intel, there's basically two loaders, uh, two drivers that are loaded in. The first one is the driver for your CD-ROM, and the second is the driver for the hard disk. So, with the custom drivers disks, we ignore all these drivers. The one we're interested in is the primary and secondary EIDE ATAPI device driver. So, we do 7 twice to get to this particular screen, then we do 5, and again. That's now using the dual channel EIDE AT API drivers for both the CD-ROM and the hard drive. So we just press 1 to continue loading. Now at this stage, the uh, boot um, sequence will try and detect both the CD-ROM and the hard disk. If it fails at this point with a panic, it will mostly like it will most likely be a panic saying cannot mount root. That means that either the virtual machine software or your real hardware does not have an IDE um, CD-ROM drive. It might be a SCSI. If it is, you should use the right driver, or it might just be broken. Okay, so when you get to this stage, just one for install. Now you can, if you know what you're doing at this stage, you can set a custom disk label for the disk. If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you don't know what a disk label is, just use option number one in VMware. And again. Now at this stage, it's going to um, make the actual file system layout, and then it is going to start copying um, various Unix binaries from the CD-ROM over to the disk. So when it says this may take a few minutes, it will take a few minutes. If you're doing this off a real CD, then go and make yourself a nice cup of coffee or, or, or whatever. This will take a while.